So one paper I distinctly remember writing in college was for a course on the rise and fall of the Soviet Union. And I still have that paper from May 1998. I wrote it, as you can tell, on federalism and the Russian constitution. And I remember this paper being so hard to write. You can see the comments from the professor here. He says a very detailed, sophisticated, and articulate analysis. He does say the paper it's only shortcoming is a stylistic one. Your expression is sometimes cumbersome and a little awkward. Ouch. He then says, always try to write in as clear a manner as possible. I'm actually really proud today of my clear, concise writing. So reading that comment now makes me shiver a bit. This paper signifies to me now how far I've come in my own writing. Look at this first sentence. In December of 1993, Russia received a newly ratified constitution by popular referendum. He marks it as awkward, and now I can see that it's awkward. First, the word received is probably not the right word, and it's an instance of the passive voice. I'm always yelling at my students for the passive voice. Look at this sentence. There is a particular idea to which to attend during the following consideration. This is so wordy. I swear I don't do that anymore. If I were using this paper as an artifact in a reflection I was writing for this course, I might really try to direct the reader's attention to these spots of awkwardness throughout the paper and talk about how I've grown since then and what I would say instead or write instead if I were to write this paper now. I should give you an example that's not from a paper. So when I was in college for one single term, I was the photographer for the school newspaper. I wasn't very good. And by the way, this was in the days before digital photography made everything so much easier and you could see mistakes before you ever put them to print. Here's an example of a photo that did not turn out so well, but there wasn't very much we could do after the fact. You can see, and I can certainly see it, and I probably knew this at the time, is that the photo is overexposed. The composition's pretty good. You have all these dogs sort of biting at each other and playing with each other. There's a bench, but it's not taking over the whole photo, but there's way too much light in this photo. You can see it kind of seems bleached out. Here's another example, and it shows you that I'm not a complete wreck when it comes to being a photographer. It's perhaps still a little bit overexposed, but the composition's really good. I really like how you can see all of the stones in the foreground, and then you have the student right here, and you have the student behind her. Action shots are particularly difficult to pull off, and they especially were in the days before digital photography. So I'm pretty happy with this one too. I like the way they are both in the center of the picture, and you can definitely see that the two sumo wrestlers are in motion. Why is this important? Because your reader doesn't have a lot of time and they don't have a lot of context. And so it's your job as the person who's authoring these reflections and putting artifacts with them to tell them where to look and why it's important to look there.